So first let's talk about storyboards. So storyboard is a concept that kind of implies a story. That means that you start in one position and then things happen and it kind of plays out in a series of, of elements. A lot of times it might be easy to think of it as a uh, as like a, a comic strip and each frame of the comic strip is is an element of that uh, storyboard. So if you think back to uh, like comic book animations or if you've ever seen any work about uh, uh, comic book uh, or comics or, or cartoons, there's a concept of a storyboard where each frame is part of that motion and uh, the idea of a storyboard has been taken into kind of this more modern application development sort of world where the storyboard represents elements of of some motion or some animation and so we call them storyboards in WPF, Silverlight, Windows 8, Windows Phone, all of these XAML based uh, things that you're going to deal with using Expression Blend uh, all the animation is done using concept called storyboards whether it's uh, keyframes or double animations or however um, you're going to be doing those it's all it's all part of the uh, storyboard and so each animation or series of animations which can be co quite complex is rolled up into an object called a storyboard uh, which uh, conceptually represents the animation but actually quite literally represents the animation in the in the underlying XAML so whether you're doing these storyboards programmatically or in XAML, it's all kind of the same. You have uh, um, either uh, specific animations on a value of some kind or something called uh, keyframes. And in this section, we're going to focus more on uh, XAML uh, using Expression Blend. So there's a lot of, of tools in Blend for doing that kind of thing that really kind of abstracts you from the complexity of it. Uh, as opposed to um, what you might do in Visual Studio using C Sharp. Now, you can do it all in C Sharp, but it tends to be a lot more uh, verbose. Uh, there was a lot of code involved, and um, if if someone is really focusing on animation and motion, they, they tend to shy away from doing it that way because it's so much easier to use uh, a tool like Expression Blend that can generate them for you using... A, a GUI tool, especially when you get into very complex animations using keyframes, you really want to, to shy away from doing them by hand. So uh, a storyboard really, when it gets down to it, is the story of some motion, whether it's you know th th visually a button uh, changing state or whether it's um, part of the screen when you log in. Um, maybe there's a preloader animation with some little spinning thing in the center of the screen or uh, maybe it's animating between two elements of your UI so you might have uh, screen one and screen two under the covers they might be all on the same surface and then you use a, a storyboard animation to the transition from one uh, uh, to the other. Maybe it's a parallax effect you're going for where the different elements are kind of moving in at different paces and and uh, um, you know things like that. So uh, a storyboard is the story of the motion that you're gonna see on the screen. So let's talk about types of animations. Um, basically there's uh, um, uh, XAML animations or code and uh, what that means is uh, in inside those the environments that we're talking about so that's going to be WPF Silverlight Windows Phone and Windows 8 the code is going to be like um, if you were to do the animation in C sharp or if you were to do uh, them in VB or whatever language you happen to be using C++ uh, and then XAML now most motion people in those environments are going to be using XAML because of the the rich tool set that you have in Blend that uh, you don't really have in Visual Studio. So in Blend you have things, uh, timeline tools uh, or that that kind of lay out your storyboard. There's um, behaviors and the Visual State Manager and all these kinds of 
elements for doing animations in a way that makes uh, more sense so people tend to do them that way so they're abstracted from the the difficulty of actually you know writing code another way of looking at animations types is uh, actually a type so like a color animation or a keyframe animation or a double animation so color animation for example is a, a discrete animation on the color of a specific object so that's going to be you know changing something from red to green you know and and it it could be uh, changing color on um, gradients and things like that where you might animate one element of a gradient color you still keep the gradient but then you change one element of it so you see it transition maybe from it goes from blue to red and now you're changing it from blue to green right and so um, a color animation would would deal with with things like that uh, as a discrete animation as opposed to um, a keyframe so a, a point animation is uh, used to animate points maybe um, uh, you're dealing with motion in a canvas these kinds of things uh, and then double animations which can include motion too but anything that ha the underlying value or property is a double so um, a lot of the objects in XAML you know it has things like an opacity or uh, might have a canvas.left property or canvas.right, which would be uh, a double animation. Any property that is a number like that, typically under the covers is a double, and so you can use a discrete double animation to uh, animate that, whatever that value is. Now, I've mentioned keyframes a number of times, and keyframes can be all kinds of different properties, uh, that they're animating but what's different about keyframes is not so much a discrete animation as a representation of a key frame in a series of frames that's part of your storyboard so what what this allows you to do is you you start at point A and instead of changing every single value as a double animation or or something in your storyboard you can set point A and set point B you know five seconds later and you're just defining those key frames and then the computer extrapolates everything between point A and point B or between the key frames so if if you have some complex motion of how you want something to get from point A to point B you can just define those key frames along that vector or along that uh, series of vectors and then the computer extrapolates between the different keyframes uh, as you go through that uh, uh, storyboard or that animation as it's being you know played out on the screen so keyframes they tend to be very verbose uh, they can get very complicated very quickly especially if you're using those animation tools but what's cool about that is those animation tools in Blend hide that complexity. And that's why uh, very rarely you see keyframes done in Visual Studio because of the, the complexity is just too much for the average uh, person to really kind of get around in their head to do really complex motion. So we typically need some kind of abstraction tool to be able to really use keyframes um, to their kind of fullest extent as it were. I'm sure there's guys out there that can do keyframe animations in Visual Studio or really complex keyframe animations but I have never met them uh, at least not knowingly and uh, uh, personally if I'm if I'm doing complex animations of course it's going to be an expression blend uh, because of that that abstraction layer and it makes it much much easier to to build these complex motion animations. So another thing I want to talk about that uh, is, is kind of a type of animation is called easing. And easing can be applied to keyframes and double animations and, and different things as an element to an animation. And what easing means is a way of controlling, say, if you have two keyframes that represent point A and point C. And there's, you know, various points in between. We've defined these keyframes and uh, we we want to apply 
some speed control so that it's instead of the computer extrapolating an even or linear animation from point A to point uh, uh, whatever I said C or D you can use easing to do something other than a linear extrapolation between the various points so so easing is really cool for having something um, you know ease in to its position say if you're moving from point A to point B and uh, maybe it'll start off fast and then slow down into that second point and so that's that's called easing and there's a lot of different easing properties or ways you can use easing so easing allows you some uh, discrete control over those animations between uh, different positions or different keyframes uh, that you wouldn't normally have so you can get away from that easing whether it's uh, uh, bouncing or quadratic effects or exponential curves or or these kinds of these kinds of different um, changes in motion speed so let's talk more about uh, keyframe animations conceptually. A good way to, to think of them uh, is as points of time. We've talked about them uh, as keyframes in a storyboard, uh, which um, when we talk about a storyboard, we're really talking about a, a period of time. And then those keyframes represent points of time where we actually define what we're actually doing or what the properties are actually are and then the computer then extrapolates things between those different points uh, whether it's using easing or not and uh, and then you get that whole animation just based on the points of in time that we've actually defined as opposed to other kinds of animations such as a double animation where you're animating a specific number over a specific period of time and you're really only defining the start point and the end point um, as opposed to keyframes which conceptually are key frames or points in time on that on that storyboard and then as I've said the motion or the points along that timeline or that storyboard are extrapolated by the computer so uh, I know I've I've touched on this earlier and keyframes uh, can get very complicated very quickly uh, especially if you're using those animation tools in blend that extrapolate that from you if you go look at the underlying code it could be very very complex so one example uh, I did this um, just game playing around for Windows Phone that uh, uh, had uh, ants in it and the object was to squish the ants right so I did uh, an initial uh, animation in blend of an ant moving across the screen and uh, there was actually um, one animation that moved its legs so it looked like it was walking and then what I did was I used uh, blend to build a complex motion of this ant crawling around looking at things and and doing different things and in blend you know it probably took me a good hour or two to to get this animation just the way I wanted it and then when I went back and looked at that uh, that animation the code under the covers that that was in the XAML in my keyframe animations it was hundreds and hundreds of lines of code uh, or XAML code not not like C sharp code but of markup to actually uh, define that that animation and that's the example of the kinds of things that in Visual Studio you just don't see animations at that level of complexity uh, typically um, without the use of of like expression blend and those those great timeline tools um, specifically the timeline editor in blend uh, that that allows you to work with those complex elements without the looking at that underlying complexity so the other thing uh, I want to talk about a little more in depth is easing. So easing is a concept really is being able to change the the uh, motion between two different points f from something other than linear. So under the covers easing is represented by mathematical curves uh, whether it's something like an exponential curve, a cubic curve, a quadratic curve, a um, Bezier curve. All these different kinds of defining a curve can be used uh, 
via easing as a way to apply that motion so the motion from point A to point B becomes something other than a linear extrapolation. So uh, easing the term comes from uh, motion as something moves in and out of a position. So uh, if you have a point A and point B and you're animating something between those two points in the screen, easing out would be to start very slow and kind of speed up and then continue on at a given speed. Now ease in would start off fast and then as it approaches the final position B, it would slow down gently and kind of ease into position. So that's where the name comes from, to ease out of position and ease into position along that, uh, that curve. Like a, a cubic curve would have a nice uh, um, easing out, a single constant motion, and then ease back in. That's where the term easing comes from. And then uh, they figured out that, ooh, we can apply these other mathematical models to that and you as a interaction uh, person doing animation in blend you don't need to understand the underlying mathematics behind that of course but just understand that that uh, you're applying these different curves uh, types of curves so you can get something uh, whether it's easing in and out or you wanted to bounce into position so it's like you throw a ball and it has a it goes fast and it's a constant motion and then as it approaches the ground it hits the ground and it bounces you know a couple times into its position uh, so you can use easing to do a lot of kind of cool things that if you were to extrapolate that stuff using say keyframe animations um, by hand it would be much much more complex instead of having two keyframes and some easing you would end up like with 45 keyframes and it would take you all day long to kind of figure out uh, just kind of the right position for those keyframes and what the values would be and to get the computer to extrapolate it without actually using an easing function. Now I've used the term already e function and really that's how we refer to them when we're talking about them in, in, in the abstract. So you're really kind of uh, uh, applying when you say you're applying easing to an animation you're applying an easing function to an animation um, so that other people kind of know know what you're talking about or you'll know what they're talking about when they're doing that and in in expression blend there's there's a few uh, easing tools that you can use to apply those uh, functions to various animations and of course you can get into the XAML and do that and using the keyframe editor a lot of times it will actually use some easing automatically depending on what environment you're using and we'll show you some of that 